Twenty graduation ceremony and I want to take a few minutes to just say huge thank you to Skilla Zaccolini who's the one who put all the student videos together into a coherent unit and Skilla also wrote the Type West theme song um, and I'd also like to thank Lauren Hart who is the former Type History TA who stepped up to coordinate this graduation ceremony and the student specimen book. So huge, huge thank you to both of you. Um, and after we, uh, we're gonna start our agenda today. And first we'll hear a brief introduction um, from Letterform Archive founder, Rob Saunders. And then we'll hear a few words from lead type design instructor, Graham Bradley. And I might say a thing or two as well. And then the students will all share their typefaces with you. Um, so after we uh, watch the video presentation, there's gonna be time for questions. Um, so please drop your questions in the Q&A and upvote any questions you'd like to see answered um, because there might be more questions than we have time for. Um, and also, hopefully, we'll hear from a few of the um, letter form lecturers and the workshop instructors who had the pleasure of helping these students through what has been a fairly difficult year. Graham can um, take a moment to uh, do the his introduction. Thank you all for coming. Um, I in in getting ready for today, I was just thinking about the first time that this class met in person. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty bizarre to think about, you know, that that meeting at the old archive building where everyone could be there together. Uh, we like to start off by just like having everybody introduce themselves and get to know each other. And I remember leaving that night with James, um, my fellow lead instructor for the Type West program. And we were both just so excited about this group. Um, not only because everyone was such, such talented designers, uh, but just because everyone had this great energy and was really, you know, like kind and connecting with each other. And everybody thinks that, you know, the program's all about type design, which it is, but it's also for us a lot, a lot of it is just building, you know, like community and connections around this thing that we love to do. Um, and all of those like, you know, feelings of like excitement and, and connection were all tested so much this year. And I'm just really proud of this group for like sticking with this program, which really is a marathon and um, supporting each other. Uh, it was really amazing to kind of see this, this group kind of navigate like having class go online, communicating on Slack exclusively instead of being in person, um, and still the whole time just creating really amazing work that you all should be really, really proud of. So uh, I just want to be the first to tell you that I am so proud of all of you for sticking with it and for seeing this through. And I'm really glad that everyone who's here gets to check out your typefaces, which are incredible and show just a really wide range of interests and just a lot of progress as designers over the year. So just want to give you my huge congratulations. Um, it was a pleasure to teach you all. And I'm very excited for everyone to see your work. Let's move on to Rob, who looks like he's back online. 
you know, the last time we did this, it was in person. And um, I suppose that's easier in a way. Um, but uh, I mean, certainly in this context, I can't even see the graduates' faces, but um, you guys have done extraordinary work this year and we're so proud of you. Um, it's, it's been uh, complicated and, um, uh, but you really stuck with it. And, and, I'm, and really I'm talking to all the instructors as well uh, and everybody who, who uh, got us this far. The typefaces are wonderful. And um, um, I think that's really all I have to say. I'm just, I'm very proud and, and I hope you do good things in the world and say good things about us. Beautiful, thank you, Rob. That was super heartfelt. Um, so I just wanna um, say a few things myself and personally, I have to let the students know how very impressed I am. Um, for a while there, I'm going to have to be honest, I wasn't sure if we'd even be able to complete the program. Um, but the students won us over with their commitment and their enthusiasm. Uh, even as they had to relocate to distant towns and endure the chaos of the global pandemic, political unrest, police violence, and a tumultuous election year. I mean, 2020 was, pff, we've never had anything like that before. And as you all know, when the pandemic hit, we were forced to pull a 180 midstream and switch to online learning. And we struggled to complete the second term, which began in person and ended online. And it's funny because while instituting an online program was always a goal for us at Type West, we never intended for it to happen this way, but here we are. And um, we recognized that this was not what any of our students signed up for. And we held a couple of, um, town hall meetings with the whole class to discuss scenarios and possible outcomes. And I am so proud to say that the decision to continue with the program was a collective one and all the students participated in making the choices that we did. This was a very hard won effort and uh, the students have some stunning typefaces to show for it. Um, so without further ado, we would like to check them out. So I know we've been having a few little technical issues on our end. Zoom is always changing stuff up on us. So I'm gonna take a moment and see if we can get that video rolling. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Chronicle, which is the typeface that I created over the course of the third semester here at Type West. So I came into this third semester with a typeface that I had created from second semester, which was a mashup of fractor black letter and reverse contrast. Honestly, by the end of second semester, I really hated it and didn't wanna keep going forward with it. So I took time over the summer to sort of think about what I wanted for my third semester. Uh, I created three goals. First, to create something I was happy with. Second, to create a typeface that nailed the basics. And third, to get comfortable designing a typeface. So with that in mind, I dove in and tried a lot of different styles over the early weeks of third semester. I was sort of cramming different elements in, trying different style combos, just sort of figuring out what it was that I wanted to create. But I realized that I had a problem. Uh, because I didn't have a very clear end goal in mind, for every change that I made, it would impact three or four other things about the typeface and it would drastically change the tone and the overall look and feel. Unfortunately, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to end up with, this meant I wasn't really sure how to control the changes and the effects they had and whether or not I liked them. Fortunately for me, um, I spent several weeks working on my typeface and I finally hit a point where I realized that I had stumbled upon this mid-century, slightly pulpy sci-fi vibe that really reminded me of Isaac Asimov, Ray Bradbury, and a lot of early science fiction novelists who dreamed big things about the future. And that was really inspiring to me and was very appealing as to what I wanted to create. 
So with that in mind, I started to really work on the edits that I was making to my typeface with this end goal in mind, and it made all the difference. So I came out with five different styles over the last part of the semester, a regular, a medium, a semi-bold, a bold, and an italic. And here's a couple examples of how I use that in application. I wanted to say many thanks to my Type West instructors, Martha, Sue, and Kevin for all of the work and helping me get to where I am. Hi, I'm Libby Bischoff, and this is Levangela. It's a reverse contrast type family that has four different styles. It utilizes the translation contrast model to give it a different feel than your average reverse dress type family. I knew I wanted to do something high contrast, so I did a lot of sketching and experimentation and ended up with these four sketches that I really liked. And I decided to combine them all and move forward with this idea. I began with the sketch and then moved into something a little bit more blobby and awkward and then somehow ended up with a bold italic. And then I used that bold italic to design three more styles, a regular display, script, and then a text weight. So the name Lavangela comes from the genus name for lavender. And for my specimen, I decided to focus on floral and garden themed use cases. So here we have a garden plant, some packaging for products that use natural ingredients. Here we have some scientific text about different kinds of flowers, just to show off my text weight. And then also some tea blend recipes, utilizing plants you could grow in your garden. I also designed some garden pun stickers. The frog parking only one is my favorite. And then here are some of my favorite characters. In the future, I hope to wrap up Lavangela, including interpolation, and then publish it online. I'd like to end by thanking all of my Type West instructors and everyone involved in the program that made this year so amazing. It was such a blessing to be a part of it, and I'm forever grateful. Thank you. Hi, I'm Martha Sue. I'm an artist, illustrator, and designer, and I've exhibited my fine artwork in the Bay Area and LA. My growing interest in letter forms brought me to Type West, where I created Curiously. Curiously is a quirky, old-style display family full of printer's flowers. It comes in black, regular, italic, text, and ornament. The regular and text weights are influenced by 15th century Roman letter forms, Grindel's history lectures, and a John Stevens Roman Capitals workshop. Here's a first sketch. And here's how a few of the letters evolved over time. The black weight and ornaments brought in elements from beautiful children's books, like Wanda Gogg's work, as well as childhood favorites from the 60s and 70s. Distinctive features include bone-shaped stems and serifs, a diagonal axis, dotted counters, and this wild set of ornaments. The rounded stems and serifs, terminals and joints pair well with illustration, and you can see a quirky handmade quality when you use it large. Display weights are best for headlines and short paragraphs, but are still readable at smaller sizes. As I worked on this family, I got really inspired by the ornaments and how they blurred the lines between typography and illustration. I wanted to spend all my time working on drop caps like this, but I figured that strawberries had no place in typography. However, when teachers and classmates encouraged me to explore ornaments, I felt like recess time and I ended up with something I'm really excited to keep working on. Curiously, my typeface family with inspiration from ancient letter forms and classic children's books. My next steps are to make themed sets of ornaments like herbs, zodiac, kitchen, explore a variable weight version, and update the black and italic weight. A big thank you to my Type West teachers and classmates for the wonderful experience. To keep an eye on my progress, please follow me on Instagram at Martha Sue Corsi.
Hello everyone, this is Noor. I love typography. I design a typeface called Panopticon. Panopticon means all seeing uh, in Greek. And this is a concept of a prison by Jeremy Bentham. My focus was uh, how, how we can implement it to museums for title. And I had no idea at the beginning about my original typeface style. And I tried many things to be unique, but I gave up from this idea because my focus was learning the process of creating a typeface from the program. So I picked some some uh, regular properties and I started drawing. I designed three different styles, bold, regular, and italic. As you can see here, I really like the bold. I learned many things while designing the bold and also uh, numbers. I really like these characters. I really enjoy while drawing uh, numbers and punctuation. So as a use case, I designed the uh, museum identity by Panopticon for Honolulu Museum of Art, actually. These are the cards and website and mobile design samples. Thank you. Hi, this is Nathan Goldman, and this is my final project for Type West, a new font called Parlor. It started with looking at things like matchbooks and 1970s fast food signage, and eventually looking through the archive to find wood type examples and Victorian type specimens that inspired me. Um, the process started with making a type cooker recipe that continued to evolve a bit through the course of the process. Uh, these are some initial sketches from a workshop we did in class and some of the first control characters that I started sketching. Once I got into the computer, a lot of the focus was on figuring out the spacing, um, equalizing negative space within letters, learning about how different letter forms would branch differently to accommodate enough of that space within each letter. And as the family expanded, in addition to the display face, I added a display italic and the more hardworking text face and starting to proof those in paragraphs, again, looking at how different letters should relate to each other. And here looking at the terminals and how they all started off a bit different and creating a more uniform look by the end of the project. These are the swash caps and starting off in a very loose area and eventually getting it to a point where it felt more like it fell into line with the rest of the style. For my specimen, we have the three final styles, the display, the display italic, and the text. And working together in paragraphs, the final character sets. And finally, with a name like Parlor, I thought it would be fitting to put together a pizza box that was screen printed as my specimen. Thank you so much to all of our teachers and to my awesome classmates. I had such a great time in this program and thanks for watching. Hi everyone, I'm Lizzie and I like to introduce you to Bounce House. To begin, I'm gonna open up with Tolstoy who famously wrote, all happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. I don't know if Bounce House is happy or not, but I do know that it is comprised of a serif, sans, and text. My journey began in term two, where I pretty much started out drawing bold letters. I got feedback to explore concave and convex stems, which I took to the extreme. What I didn't realize was how hard ultra bold letters would be. I often struggled with balancing the positive and negative shapes. Additionally, I got obsessed with the balloon shape, which got in the way of drawing good letters, as seen here with this S that looks like a crap leg. 
Needless to say, term two was rough, and here was my work at the end of it. During our COVID break, I watched Contagion on repeat and channeled all my anxiety into Bounce House. I continued to add letters as well as numbers. I also went back to exploration mode, like re-looking at my serif sizes. At the end of term two, I removed the D serif because it just didn't fit. It was suggested that perhaps my serifs were too big, so I explored smaller ones with white out. This didn't spark joy, so I kept the D the same for most of the break. But then I was binge watching Friday Night Lights and saw their D with a reverse serif. Dare I do the same? With clear eyes and a full heart, I didn't think I could lose, so I totally went for it. And this is where I was at the end of COVID break. In term three, we started to see the rise of Bounce House. To figure out what my family should be, I looked at deflated objects for inspiration. I also carved out the existing letters on my iPad and drew over them with brushes. I ultimately settled on a sans and text version. With the sans, I had the same problems I did with the serifs, which was balancing the negative and positive shapes. And this resulted in intentionally having inconsistent terminals. For text, I had to figure out how similar or not letters should look to its bold counterparts. And I returned back to the D. I received feedback that the reverse serif made it look like a completely different letter. In the end, I reduced the bowl size and this allowed for a chunky serif to fit. And here we are at the end of term three. Here's the completed serifs, sans, and text. I hope to return back to Bounce House someday, especially term three work. Until then, thank you for listening. Hi everyone, my name is Lauren and the type family I designed is called Gramercy. I started with this upright italic display, which was based on some initial sketches that I was doing when I was learning how to use a pilot pen. I was separating the upstrokes and the downstrokes and I liked the way that it looked and I brought the sketches to James and he's like, oh cool, so you're gonna do an upright italic? And I was like, I had no idea what an upright italic was. And I was like, yeah, 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 doing an upright italic. And I like went and Googled what an upright italic was. But it evolved into this and I liked the cadence and I liked the way that it blended both organic and geometric forms. So I went with it. And then I did a Roman to pair with the upright italic. And those two styles went pretty well together, but I knew that I wanted to expand the family outside of just display and also do a text companion. So I started with the lightweight and then I added a semi-bold. And here are those two styles together. And most recently I've been working on a heavy weight of the upright italic display, which is still incomplete, but I like the direction that it's going and hopefully I can finish this style and then continue to expand the family. For my specimen, I rebranded the Gramercy Park Hotel, which is actually the inspiration for the name of my type family. When I started Type West, my main goal was to just strengthen my brand practice. And this was a really fun experiment to do that with this new family that I created. So I created a new word mark and a new secondary mark. And then I just continued to experiment and try to stretch the family as far as I could go. And I was surprised at how far it went with just the few styles that I had. I did a spread for the magazine with both the text and display. And I rebranded the hotel restaurant, Myelino with the heavyweight and did a menu for them with the text. And that's pretty much it. So thank you so much for coming and supporting all of us. I'm so grateful for the Type West community and its extended family, all of you. This year has been real shitty and I'm just grateful to have learned this new creative skill and to be surrounded by some pretty awesome people. So thank you so much. My name is Kevin Barrett Kane. This is my design for FPO or for placement only. FPO is an old style serif typeface specifically for book design. Initially, I conceived of FPO as a super family with several designs representing different voices in the publication of a book. The serif would represent the author's manuscript with the Roman, italic, and bold found therein. The sans serif would represent the publisher with a number of different voices who would get involved in the publication of the book. The script would be relegated to the margins and would represent a number of different wanted or unwanted editor's notes on the manuscript. My initial sketches uh, 
for FPO, I was quite thrilled with. Um, but when I started digitizing them, I noticed that I'd overdrawn by quite a bit. And so my serifs were too chunky and the overall design was a little bit overdone. When the coronavirus hit in March, um, I sort of welcomed that break uh, as a way to pursue some other uh, some other designs that have been rattling around in my head. I worked on a typeface called Mustard, which was a sans serif, and then returned to my Bremer Antiqua revival from the first semester, both of which informed in some ways the final design of uh, FPO. From the beginning of TypeWest, I've always been interested in um, some of the more nitty gritty production work that goes into type design. And so for FPO, I wanted to combine not just the basic character set um, in my design, but also work on um, the diacritics as uh, special characters, ligatures and punctuation, old style figures and fractions, and then true small caps with uh, diacritics as well. I applied the same level of rigor to the italic. I also developed a series of ornaments to pair with the typeface. When I started looking at it in context, it was important to see these letter forms in the context of the book, and so I started testing them rigorously at smaller sizes. And uh, that's where I am today. I hope to interpolate some more weights out of this design in both the italic and the Roman, and then start to work in on some of the other styles I discussed in the beginning. Thank you. Sway is a reverse contrast typeface that's shamelessly offbeat. It plays a game of teetering polar opposites, angular yet organic, smooth and edgy. There's an obvious tension, but what is a great story without a little conflict? I've been thinking a lot about the juxtaposition between two contrasting ideas, how they conflict, but could also harmonize. And so I pulled inspiration from letters I'd seen in Spain, Unshields, my experiments with tech cookers, and in Lin Yun's calligraphy for prototyping class, I used this uh, rigid piece of balsa wood, gave it some notches for texture, and tried to create organic forms from this. So I held it at a vertical and swept these heavy horizontal strokes that ended with the angular strokes following the form of the piece of wood. So this became the foundation for the typeface. An issue I ran into was figuring out how to reverse contrast because it's not as simple as just turning the thick thin and the thin thick. It was really an exercise in learning how to really see weight in type and, and notice rhythm and then know when something's got to give. My patient instructors uh, helped me to focus and learn to go all in on one concept. So after killing all my darlings, this is Sway. Hi, Jess Smith here talking about my first font metrical. I started by collecting stuff I liked, a lot of translation, black letter, and chiseled fonts. Type cookers and experimental workshops helped to get my brain away from the computer screen, but I was most comfortable with using a flat brush on the iPad and experimenting with warping it. The most interesting was the bottom heavy back slant on the left. My plan was to build a family based on the use of a broad nib tool. Both display one style unconventional and gestural and the other style more classical Roman to create an interesting font pairing. I started with the back slant brush because it seemed fun. Bottom heavy with curved stems, vaguely inspired by black letter calligraphy marker hand style. The biggest challenges were angle consistency and not adding too many weird experimental things like bony joints and random overshoots. So it basically became a game of refining, pulling back and learning. The toughest letters were M and N. I ultimately moved a little away from the black letter and more towards marker and brush influence. It's still a work in progress, but I'm happy with where it ended up. 
I started the Roman soon after I started the brush and then worked on them in tandem, adding some of the same qualities like the curve of the stem. I started with a wide bulb because I thought it would be something I would use. I ended up scrapping this. The vibe was too sci-fi fantasy pirate. I pivoted to a more basic sans serif with no pressure variation. I then started chiseling away thicker strokes and adding in more Roman features. I was able to slowly add in bits of personality like curves and crossbars and some flirting with serifs in the entry and exit strokes. It's fun to see the progress from where I started to where I ended with this style, a usable classic Roman. It was now time to bridge a gap between the backslant brush and the upright Roman and create a usable italic for the Roman. I went with a curved backslant to reference the brush style. I started too wide and learned italic forms were a bit condensed by nature. My O's were especially too wide and I added a little too much curve to the stems. I was eventually able to refine it to the point of having a passable italic, working both in line with a paragraph style or outside as a block quote. I ended up with a diverse family and an invaluable learning experience. Each style is different, but some important features inform one another. I'm happy with the result, but I already see room for improvement. The goal for my specimen was to use the family in unconventional ways. My inspiration was house music. I created a record sleeve for a seven inch that I swear I will send to the archive one day. I had the most fun creating flyers that could be Xeroxed, cut down and handed out in the street. And of course, merch like t-shirts and stickers. I'm Jess Smith and thank you for listening. Hey everybody, it's Freakish. Freakish is the slightly condensed sans serif made for text, but with a flair of originality. Comes in about eight weights. Uh, the fattest is Chubb, thinnest I'm calling Razor. Here's a quick overview of how they look. And here are the masters I made. So we have a master and Razor, uh, regular and the black. Um, here's a quick example of how some of the characters change. I uh, designed ligatures. I also put in step changes. There's plenty of symbols. And here's uh, some up close looks, nice and big. Regular, bolt. Here's the text color, text color of uh, the razor and of the black. Uh, the ampersand in all the weights, you can kind of see some some changing, and there's more. This is a uh, stylized version of Freakish called Smush. Um, it's a font that dials up the fun and the flair. It's very condensed and lets you express a lot in a small amount of space. Uh, here's a basic overview of the character set, ligatures, and also designed uh, alternate characters. Here's some um, layouts and in a poster. And there's one more thing. I also started on a, a italic that's hyper stylized, but in the same family. Um, this is staged italic. And I just started on the lowercase, so I never got it to finish the uppercase. Um, but here's some of the basic overview and some spacing. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for a great class and an awesome end to a crazy, crazy year. Hi, I'm Jeremy Tribby, and I'm going to walk through my typeface Kinzig. Um, it's named after a river where Rudolf Koch lived and worked. Extreme music was my personal gateway into black letter, and I wondered what an extreme black letter might look like. I knew of one from Lucian Bernhard on the bottom left there, and I asked Stoof if he had an image. I think Stoof understood what my request kind of implied, and he came back with a lot of great stuff. I'm not a calligrapher, so I was pretty intentional about using markers and paint pens rather than a broad nib to sketch out my ideas and to kind of figure out the mechanics of the strokes. But before I get into Kinzig, I want to get into why it's incomplete, um, which is that up until the last three weeks of Type West, I was mostly working on this grotesque. It has tons of styles and axes and languages, and I was also working on this Scotch Roman. Um, but James really pushed me not to worry so much about what a typeface might be used for. Uh, so with three weeks left, I asked Masha if she thought I had enough time to switch to the black letter. And she was like, it's always a short time. 
And there's really just no response to that. So I committed myself to it. Um, as you can see, I'm still working out what the uppercase looks like, but with the whole extreme music thing in mind, I made sure Norway and Sweden are represented. I came up with exactly five tenuous examples of how Kinzig might be used, and I think it's exciting to be working on a typeface where I just don't know the answer to that question. Um, I guess one answer is trying to fit Acid Mother's Temple's full name onto one line of text, or maybe it's printing Bibles with Mario Savio quotes in them, I just don't know. Um, but I'm really excited to find out. Uh, so that's Kinzig. I hope you like it. And thanks so much to everyone at Type West and the Letterform Archive for making this such a great scene. Hi, I'm Bert Strong. This is Marbles, a typeface that makes learning anything approachable. When I was growing up, what typeface the worksheet was set in affected how excited about it I was. Calibri was okay, Times New Roman was never a good sign, and Comic Sans was pretty great, or at least as good as it would get for homework. Most people don't find Comic Sans threatening, and many enjoy it in playful memes. I tried to capture that whimsical vibe with Marbles. Marbles is also influenced by the East Asian Gothic style. Before I had an aesthetic target, I was trying to create a monospaced typeface by reimagining Latin script written top to bottom rather than left to right. The East Asian Gothic forms my Japanese handwriting is modeled after naturally came through. I eventually ditched the fictional lighter forms, but the kind of like strokes are still noticeable. As a learning tool, I wanted to have extensive character support, but also wanted every character to be distinguishable from others when handwritten. This proved to be difficult when designing script letters used in math. I had to be careful not to add entry or exit strokes that could be confused for hook diacritics. At the same time, I also tried to avoid having the exact same ductus as the Roman letters. I gathered many teaching scripts from Europe, the United States, and Vietnam to reference as possible solutions. However, many of these letters were too proper and ornate for the approachable vibe I was going for. After lots of experimentation, I found that detaching strokes kept them from being too fancy. Once it was time to add extreme weight to the glyphs, it became clear that my novel script letters were going to need further unorthodox treatment. I landed on squishing the counters into swirling tadpole shapes. It's one part crazy, one part creamy, and kind of reminds me of the patterns you might find in marbles. I hope to expand the character set and styles in the future, but first I need to work on just getting the existing set more consistent. There's tons of feedback from my instructors and classmates that I haven't gotten to incorporate yet. Speaking of whom, I'd like to thank my classmates for their camaraderie in such a tough year. I also want to thank James Edmondson, Maria Dorili, Kel Troughton, Tommy Sharp, Frank Griesummer, Lin Yin, and Florence Fu for their contributions to the development of the typeface. Thank you for tuning in. Fantastic. Congratulations, everybody. That was amazing. Um, amazing videos from all the students. I'd like to open the floor now. Um, and first, if there are any Type West instructors or letterform lecturers who would like to say a little something, I'd love to hear from you. And then um, we'll relay any questions that the public has for the students. So please drop your questions now in the Q&A. And please upvote the questions you'd like to see answered. Um, let's move on. Any uh, instructors, letter form lecturers, TAs, whoever would like to speak, now is the time for you to have the floor. Uh, hi. So I just wanted to say um, I was with the class from the beginning as a TA, and it's just so inspiring and exciting to see how much everyone has grown in the past year, despite all the challenges. And I just wanted to say congrats to everyone for getting through it. And I know how much hard work and blood, sweat and tears you all put in and it's really paid off and you should all be very proud. Um, and yeah, thank you for letting me be a part of it. Tommy, woohoo, thank you. Anyone else? I see a few people here like Lynn. Lynn, you got anything you want to say? Um, Kel, anybody want to step up? Please just hit the raise hand button or you can uh, put it in the chat. All right, thank you.
Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, that was seriously so, so, so impressive. Um, and I just wanted to say congratulations to everyone. Um, I mean, like, it's been a difficult year to, to say the least. But um, I mean, it, I'm just like mind blown. Like I know, like I, um, it, it seems like a lifetime ago that we were like in like the archive, like experimenting with ink and paper and all that stuff. Um, and it's just like mind blowing how like everyone like took their directions. And um, anyway, I'm just super impressed over here. And hello from very cold New York City. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for chiming in. Do we have anybody else who'd like to say a few words of congrats to these awesome students? Okay, maybe I'm going to start reading out some questions from the uh, the public here. If um, if we don't have any more letter form lecturers, instructors, TAs, et cetera, who'd like to pipe up. Don't worry though, if you missed that opportunity, raise your hand and we'll get you up, okay? Uh, meanwhile, we have a couple questions from the public. Uh, David Jones wants to know, can we buy a specimen book? What's the answer? Um, we're getting specimen books printed and uh, I don't, Think they'll be for sale we'll see how many we end up with we may have a um a giveaway of those so keep your eye on the letter form archive website and see um if you can get in on that uh next question up we have chris polly asks james explain the don't make typefaces people want to use james are you available to answer that question? Mm -hmm. James going once, going twice. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe we'll get back to that one in a minute. Um, we have a question from Anonymous who asks, what was the best in-person slash online moment of the experience. Any students who want to answer that, please raise your hand and we'll put you up on the screen. Don't be shy. Cuckoo. Okay, we have five participants raising their hand to speak here. Um, Sarah or Skilla, is this something that you can facilitate? It is happening now. Awesome. Okay, we got a bunch of students up here to answer the question. What was the best in-person online moment of the experience? Um, who wants to go first? How about Michelle? We'll go alphabetical order. Sure, I can go first. Um, so there were a couple things that were really memorable, but I think the overall highlight for me was being able to work with my classmates um, and see each other's work and see each other's frustrations and ideas and go through that. That made a huge difference just in terms of feeling like Am I crazy? James had this correction on my S. I don't see what he's looking at. I'm just missing this. And then uh, just being inspired by what everyone else had to show. Um, I think one of the most fun elements for me was during third semester, uh, because I didn't really have a good sense of where I was headed. I, my, typeface, my typeface kept changing drastically week to week. And Kevin turned it into a running joke that I was coming back with a brand new typeface every single week. Um, which was kind of true and also just really hilarious. So uh, it just added an element of making everything kind of fun, even though it was so much work week to week. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for me. I can pass it on to somebody else. Okay, how about Kevin? Kevin, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, um, I can attest to Michelle bringing a new typeface every week. Um, 
as far as you know, I think it was it was tough to move into the virtual learning space for us. I think especially because um, we had so many great in-person workshops. I can't really point at one that was any better than the others, but um, you know, one moment that kind of sticks out to me is um, just watching John Stevens do calligraphy work. I think uh, most of us in that in that workshop spent half the time working on our own uh, calligraphy and the other half just watching him and his masterful hand uh, handwork doing Roman capitals. Um, and then I know Lynn's been getting a lot of love in the uh, in the chat here, but her, I think, uh, workshop was really came at a pivotal moment for all of us where we were trying to figure out what we were going to do for our um, our second and third semester and that workshop I think guided us in, in, in a lot of ways. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I'm looking at Emma. Yeah, I will just add on to that, you know, because Kevin mentioned a great point about how we get exposed to all these great masters of today. But um, what I really loved too was uh, your class, Grendel, where we get to see all the historical uh, type references and learning about all of those and getting inspiration from those and just learning about how big this world is. Um, and that's something kind of, uh, you know, that the archive was able to, to provide um, just given the big collection. So it was really amazing to be able to see and experience those things. Pretty Yay, cool. thank you, Emma. Um, how about you, Bert? Um, yeah, I have to agree with Emma there. Uh, in a time where we couldn't travel um, or, you know, go to certain places, it was so great to have, um, you know, the history class and uh, have people come in, such as, you know, having a virtual kind of neon sign tour of the neon signs in San Francisco. Um, and just in general, having a place or a group of people to connect with in a very isolating time uh, every week. Great, thank you all for answering that question. Let's see what's next on the Q&A. Um, Peter Cho, who is actually a graduate of type at Cooper West asks, do you think anything was better about teaching remote over in-person? Any silver linings? So, I mean, I could say something about teaching remote, but let's hear from the students about learning remote. I can add one thing to that. Um, so what was really nice was when we were in person, we would go up and get about five to 10 minutes, I think, for uh, review. But the way that the online lectures or the, the online feedback sessions were broken down is we would get um, like an hour uh, split between two or three other people. So I think it was an hour. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now, but uh, we got a lot more time. And I think because there wasn't a, a need to get out of an area or have to commute, it just felt like if we ran over a little bit to get a little bit more detail or feedback, that was okay. Um, so it just gave us an extra opportunity to really lean into getting the feedback that we wanted week to week. And then the nice thing was, is because it was um, separated out. So all of the feedback sessions were separated out on different days, depending on availability. But you could jump into other weekdays, um, and if people had time, leftover time, or were willing to, you could get additional feedback um, on your typeface from other instructors. So it just gave you a chance to have much more touch points throughout the semester in terms of improving your work. Great. Thank you. Anyone else wants to comment about the positives about the online experience? Yeah, I can build off of what Michelle mentioned. You know, I think having that hour session where we're seeing other students work and what they're working through was, I think, really helpful to have that visibility and be able to learn from their process as well and what kind of feedback they're getting to then implement on ours. Um, instead of, you know, before where we were just so like heads down on our own typefaces, I think it was really helpful to see what everyone's been working on and be able to like cross pollinate more that way. Awesome. Anyone else comment? I love that you guys are stepping up here. 
Okay, you want to take the next question or does anybody have any other comments about the awesome online learning experience? Um, okay. yeah. Oh, one last thing I was going to say, the only thing I really miss is not being able to go into the letter from archive in person and look at all the source materials. Um, the whole setup online uh, that the letter form put up where you can go in and look at all the materials digitally is really, really wonderful and was a great supplement and very helpful. But man, do I miss being able to go in person uh, and look at all the resource materials uh, kind of directly. So that was the only thing that I, I do miss and I'm hoping to get back once everything reopens up. Um, but the online resources that were made available helped a lot. Yay, thank you. And thanks to um, Kate and Paola and the archive team who spent a lot of time getting those uh, digital resources up for us. Um, Let's see, we got more questions. Um, da, da, da. Okay. Ooh. Um, <laughs> Will the work be exhibited in real life at some point? Ooh. <laughs> we can only hope so. We hope there will be a in real life at some point. Um, we have a question from Horant who asks, are any of the students interested in supporting underrepresented writing systems in the future? Anybody want to pick that one up? Yeah, I, I think all the people, uh, all the um, students that you see on the call right now have interest in that uh, in some form or another. I know Emma and I, we talk about uh, Vietnamese. Uh, Kevin's already designed a lot of uh, diacritics. Uh, and Michelle uh, has a lot of experience with like uh, Japanese. Um, but me personally, I uh, am interested in, you know, other scripts besides Latin that uh, may not get as much love and coverage. Fantastic. I mean, that is definitely something about the Type West program that we're trying to, um, we do teach mainly uh, Latin uh, letter forms, but we are always interested in expanding those horizons. So I'm glad to hear that you all are picking up on that. Um, oh, Hugo asks, is there a 2020 website up yet? Not yet. We're working on it. Um, expect some more details when uh, our printed specimen is blasted out on social media. So in about a month or two. Oh, can't wait, can't wait. Um, Habib Placencia asks, um, Habib who is a current student at Type West asks, what advice would you give students of this current year who are about to embark on a fully virtual year? Great question, Habib. Who wants to take that? Kevin? Yeah, I can answer this one. Um, I think for me personally, I, I think finding um, the space to, if you can, the space to spread out and th that first and second semester, I found it really crucial to work back and forth between the computer and paper, um, working with the, the different tools and, and whether it's, you know, pens or calligraphic brushes and, and really figuring out how those, how to, how, you know, what your mark making um, is and, and like and using that to inform your digital design. I think that's really important. Yeah, and, Ke and Kel actually points out a, a really good point, um, printing off your proofs to make sure if I was going to give one piece of, piece of advice, buy a printer, um, print at 600 DPI and, uh, and look at your tech, you know, look at your design in, uh, in context. Um, I would add kind of at a general uh, program level, um, you know, to, to be honest and supportive. I think that really got our class through um, 2020. Um, and I don't wanna promise the whole world on uh, behalf of uh, the letter form archive, but um, I think Brendel and everyone are very willing to hear 
you know, out um, any issues that are going on and, and work around them. Uh, so big thanks to Kevin for bringing those concerns uh, over to Letterform Archive staff and uh, to Grendel and the rest of the team for uh, responding to them uh, while they were juggling like 20 other things. Yeah, we had a lot of balls in the air, all right. Uh, but uh, like I said before, thanks to all of you for letting us know what you wanted and the best way to get there. That was really, really amazing collective effort on your part. Um, okay, I'm looking for some new questions or does anybody else want to answer some of the questions that have come up here about teaching remotely versus in person, et cetera, or any other highlights of the year that you'd like to share with the, the people on the call? Um, I do want to say one thing, which is uh, make no mistake. It if, it's, if your semester is anything like ours, it's a lot of work. <laughs> There's a lot of time uh, and hours going into stuff and editing things and what feels like pixel pushing to get curves right and figure out how to make it all flow really smoothly. Um, I think I gave many, many, many hours, especially over our Thanksgiving break in particular uh, to it. Um, however, it pays off. And one of the interesting things for me, having come from a background with no real type experience was uh, in the first semester, I would get critiques and edits back on uh, the typeface that I was reviving because uh, first semester was focused on that. And James would mark things off and I'd be like, I don't see what he's looking at. Like, I don't see what he's trying to tell me is wrong. And then by the end of the third semester, because I kept working at it, I finally had kind of uh, my eyes were opened and able to see a lot of the flaws in my own work and go back and self edit and self critique. And I think that's possibly for me one of the most powerful takeaways from this program um, because it means going after and designing stuff. So I'm, I'm working on a new typeface now. Uh, it's a chance for me to be able to self edit and do things without necessarily feeling like I don't have a sense of direction. Um, the program, like I said, the program is a lot of work, um, but take the most advantage as you can of any of the, oh my gosh, I forgot the Monday meetings that they were called um, with Tommy, but it was like a study hall um, show up to like everything you can try not to miss a week, because if you do, it can feel pretty detrimental, um, to your flow. Uh, Emma, I can see you laughing as I say that, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a great program and it's been a lot of fun and really educational and I wouldn't trade it for anything, but, um, yeah, just wanted to give you a heads up. Anyone else? Emma? I'll add one. Oh, go ahead, Emma. Oh, I was just going to add to um, Michelle and answer another, uh, the question that Habib had earlier about advice for current students that are all digital is, um, you know, the, the Type West and Letterform Archive community is full of such uh, knowledgeable and passionate people. And uh, maybe on a virtual environment, you know, it might not feel as uh, easy to approach them, but like everybody's been so warm and um, always open to helping like Kate and Stu, you know, giving us all these different resources whenever we're interested in a topic. So I definitely encourage you to reach out to the community and um, all of the different people in this program if you have any questions or if you want to dig, dig things further. And then Lauren? Yeah, I was just going to say um, one thing is that most of the people in this program are also working full time and Obviously this year was really difficult, but I would say to anyone entering the program, don't be too hard on yourself. I mean, it is a lot of work, but um, just get what you can out of it. And there's so many amazing resources. Uh, there were a few people that couldn't even finish the year this year. And, you know, they put so much into it and it's a, it's a tough thing to do virtually. And that's just kind of part of it. There's a lot of benefits to doing it virtually because we get to include so many people from all over, but it is, it is really hard. So don't be too hard on yourself and just get what you can out of it. And, and that's all really you can ask for. Thank you, Lauren. Kevin, you're off muted. Did you have something to add? I was gonna answer the question about hamburger fonsive in the chat. Um, Go for it. Yeah, so when one of the hardest things I'd say to designing a typeface is where do you start? Um, and so, uh, the instructors 
sort of push you to start with what they call control characters. Um, and control characters are like the capital O, the capital H and the lowercase N and the lowercase O, um, which kind of have a, they have enough variety of forms to help you build out some of the, you know, some of the other letter forms. And as you start to, you know, build out some of the other letters, um, one of the control words you use to sort of start testing spacing and characters is um, the absurdly, the absurd hamburger font sieve. I see in the chat, someone has, so Harant says, my favorite is Nina's rain frogs. That sounds like a good one. And I see Michelle has said, another word to students, if your lowercase r sticks out too far, James will call it a leaky faucet. My God. Okay, you know, I'm not seeing any more questions in the um, Q and A. Uh, is there anybody else who has not had a chance to say anything? Any other instructors or letter form lecturers who'd like to say a few words of um, congratulations or anything like that before we uh, wrap this up? Speak now, raise your hand. I see Rob. Yeah, Rob I, I'd like to add that um, coming back physically is possible for you guys you all live around here maybe not maybe not anymore i'm not so sure of, of current state but um we hope to see you again it's going to happen soon well it'll happen when it happens you're very welcome and and really to everybody on the line watching this that's very true for you as well i mean it may be a year or more before travel and uh you know, it might, that, that one may take a little longer and it's harder, but um, everyone is welcome here and we really enjoy um, having visitors. And, and we're also, I, I have to say, challenged by and enjoying uh, trying to translate as much as we can of that experience um, online in various ways. So it's, it's especially heartening with the graduates of this class who were in the middle of the transition and were in that sense guinea pigs. So thank you for your patience. And I hope that you're um, happy with the results. Um, I have one question here. Oh, um, apparently a lot of type at Cooper people are uh, watching this today and they wanna know when the recording will be made available. It should be available in a couple weeks after this at the most. Um, and then we have a question from David Jones who asks all the panelists, um, in other words, all the students, what your favorite test hamburger fonts of words are, if you have one that is different. Um, over the course of the program, I started to like research a lot about letter frequency. And uh, the one that I landed on uh, was uh, both like capital in title case tactful admonisher. I guess I can type it uh, in the Q&A too, but um, that one's nice for letter frequency stuff. Anyone else have something different and cool and risque? Tact or just weird like tactful admonisher? Something to check out. Okay, anybody else have any questions or statements or anything? Better drop them now because we're going to sign off otherwise. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Any last words from any of the? Oh, Rob's got his hand up again. Okay, Rob. No, never mind. That was intended as a wave, not a, not a raised hand. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it's time to wrap things up, everybody. If uh, nobody else has anything else they want to add, I have to say thank you, everybody um, worldwide for attending today. This was amazing. And let's all give the students one final huge round of applause for all their work. I cannot wait to see these typefaces in the world. Indeed.
Congratulations, Type West class of 2020. Hmm. Signing off. <laughs>